mess in your seatbelt, Goddard. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. The sky is falling! The sky is falling! Although it may not seem like it on first glance, Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius was one of the most bone-chilling and lore-filled movies of all time. It tricks you. It plays with your mind. It truly is a spider web of information, both hidden and unhidden in plain sight, that once uncovered, reveals a story so shocking that no one will believe it. That being said, I feel no one's deeply dove into this topic enough to really see what Jimmy Neutron actually is. It's an art piece for the ages. So join me today, Mr. Cow, as we dive deep into Jimmy Neutron, boy genius. Internal combustion is such old science. Bubble travel is the way of the future. <laughs> The first piece of Jimmy Neutron lore we need to talk about is Jimmy's famous brain blast. Now, the brain blast is Jimmy Neutron's way of delving deep within his own mind to solve complex issues. However, the way this first ever brain blast comes to be raises many interesting questions. Jimmy, Carl, and Goddard are headed into space to launch a pseudo-message in a bottle to make contact with aliens. Now this pseudo-message in a bottle is constructed out of a toaster and many other objects. These objects add to the weight of that toaster, already being a rather heavy and blunt object. When Carl throws the toaster into orbit, it comes barreling back at Jimmy's face. Once Jimmy is struck in the skull by this toaster, he is given his first brain blast, meaning that Jimmy's brain blasts are caused by blunt force trauma. The amount of force coming back with that toaster falling straight on Jimmy's head is enough to at least leave the small child concussed, whose skull may not be fully formed yet, given its deformed shape as it stands right now. Jimmy has been struck quite hard, and his brain has most likely bounced off the barriers set by his own skull, meaning that fluid could be leaking in and around his brain. Now, once this happens, Jimmy immediately starts thinking. He says it, think, think, and the camera sweeps into his mind, showing it pulsating in a weird purplish glow, a purplish glow that's to symbolize bruising and mental anguish. Jimmy's brain has been damaged, and this damage, while causing adverse effects like stunting his growth, hence the jokes about his height throughout the movie, also has some pros to it. Pros such as superhuman intellect. As the film progresses, it becomes clear that Jimmy's skill has greatly increased. He's no longer building rocket ships that fail, but rather building whole fleets of them that can fly just fine, inventing technology that makes it so you don't have to wear spacesuits in outer space, perfecting his previous equipment, such as Goddard's writable mode that he uses at the end of the film, or his shrink ray that he also uses at the end of the film in reverse to make himself planet-sized. Jimmy's intellect grows after this strike to the head. The only thing that doesn't grow is his height. Now, the average height of an American eight-year-old boy is anywhere from 47 to 54 inches. Now, Jimmy being in the lower percentile to begin with, we'll say that he is at 47 inches at this time, meaning that he is just below four feet tall, even with his massive head that is bound to stay the same shape since his growth has been stunted from this blow to the head. Jimmy will become a mastermind genius, a superhuman being in terms of intellect, but his height shall remain exactly the same, just below four feet. Now this first piece of Jimmy Neutron lore is actually very interesting when looking at Jimmy Neutron as a character. Jimmy has the power, as it's seen throughout the film, to make himself larger, something that he definitely values. He's upset that he's made fun of for his height, being just below four feet, though towards the end of the movie he grows to planet size to defeat the Yokians. However, Jimmy never decides to increase his height by something like six inches to put himself in the higher percentile. That's because his great intellect has made him realize that height and stature are not important when it comes to matters of science. 
you can be short and still be smart. It's a very interesting and deep look at what it takes to be smart. You have to accept yourself for what you are. Now, I've actually tested this toaster theory before. The theory states that a eight-year-old male child, after being hit in the head with a toaster, should be able to delve deep into their own minds or do a brain blast in order to have the intellect and skill to avoid the next piece of danger. In this case, a second toaster that I was holding that I would then throw at the child. But after testing this theory with over 58 year old male children, I can in fact say that not one was able to do a brain blast after the first toaster, and all but one got hit by the second toaster. The one that avoided it quickly succumbed to the third toaster I kept hidden on the table behind me. So while my experiment failed, it still seems like that is the case for Jimmy Neutron. His intellect was much higher than any of the eight-year-olds I threw toasters at, so perhaps the level of intellect must be higher before triggering a brain blast. With that all being said, I feel it's now time to move on to how Jimmy actually acquired all of that intellect, because it seems like his parents were unable to breed a child with so much brains up in his head. It just doesn't make sense given the two's standing intellect. Jimmy's mother, Judith, is fairly smart. Not a super genius, but definitely higher on the scale than most people. However, his father, Hugh Neutron, is perhaps on the lower end of the scale, being a babbling idiot. So how on earth did it come to be that Jimmy is a boy genius? Well, that's where this theory gets even more interesting. Hugh Neutron was actually a super genius before Jimmy was conceived, i.e. Jimmy couldn't be conceived. Hugh Neutron was barren after working in a lab with radiation for so long, killing off all of his sperm. Devastated by the fact that he and his wife could not have a child to carry on their legacy, Hugh Neutron decided to do the only thing he could, grow a baby in a test tube. With his superhuman intelligence, it was no problem. Using his DNA and his wife's DNA, he was able to create Jimmy Neutron. However, the boy's intellect was not up to his standards. So Hugh Neutron, deciding that it was better to have a new generation of geniuses in the Neutron family, decided to transfer his knowledge into Jimmy Neutron. It sounds far-fetched, but it's clear that this is something that is possible within the world of Jimmy Neutron, as it's seen in the TV show episode, Trading Faces. When Jimmy and Sydney switch bodies, they have to resort through their memories to get them back to normal. So it's possible to boost someone else's intellect with your own while leaving yourself on the lower end of intellect. This is exactly what Hugh Neutron had his wife Judith do. He had her sort through both of their brains and insert into Jimmy Neutron all of his intellect when it came to science and inventing things, leaving Hugh Neutron with his love of ducks and pie and almost nothing else. If Jimmy were to know of this situation, he may be put down even further, thinking himself some form of freak for being grown in a test tube rather than in the conventional manner. Or he would take pity on his father and try to bring his intellect back up to a point where they could relate more. Given all this information and all the possibilities for being bullied in school and being looked down on, Hugh and Judith decided it would be best not to tell Jimmy about where he came from, from the test tube. They decided it would be best to say that he was raised as a conventional child. This secret never left the two of them and never made it to Jimmy Neutron. It's an interesting theory as to why Jimmy Neutron's father is as stupid as he is. He is on a whole new level when compared to all the other characters within the show, even Sheen Estevez and Carl Weezer, two characters that are definitely on the lower end of intellect. Hugh Neutron has to be the stupidest character in the entire show. And in order to have a child with that much intellect, this is the only scenario that makes any sense. Jimmy was grown in a test tube, and Hugh Neutron gave all of his intellect to the boy at a very young age. Hugh Neutron and Judith Neutron manufactured Jimmy's brain to be superhuman from the very beginning. This is a very interesting theory, I have to say. I'd love to hear what you think of it down in the comment section below. I think it's all but 100% confirmed. However, it is very clear that Jimmy Neutron has some confusion about his parents. Now, this may be a side effect from being grown in a test tube. 
Jimmy Neutron is far too smart to get the two confused in a pseudo message in a bottle being sent out to alien life forms. He wouldn't make a mistake and leave it in and then send it into space as the alien's first impression on humanity. It's very clear that Jimmy is just confused about who his parents are, what rules they have, and how it applies to him because he was grown on a test tube and is missing that bonding that he got from being born traditionally. It's very likely that Hugh Neutron, once he became stupid, forgot about Jimmy for some time in the test tube, leaving Jimmy to be somewhat disconnected from his parents. This disconnect from his parents could easily have led to the strange scene where Jimmy confuses the two of his parents' titles. Now that we know how Jimmy got his great intellect, it's time for us to see how he puts it to use throughout this movie with the main theme. You may think the main antagonist of this film is the Yokians, and that's somewhat true, but they're merely disciples of their god, Poltra. Poltra wants to feast on the adults from Earth, from Retroville, the parents Jimmy and his friends are going to save. Now the Yokians are an advanced alien species. They know that this is in fact their god. They're not misled by it. It is in fact some form of god on their planet. And with its feasting on people, it can be derived that this is in fact a planet eater type god. If the god is not given its sacrifice, it will enact its force on the people around it. It needs sustenance to stay around, and if it's not given that, it will take it from the Yokians. That is the price to pay to have this god as your protector. Jimmy Neutron is able to save his parents and escape with ease. Jimmy Neutron goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with an actual god and outsmarts it. With that all being said, it's clear that Jimmy's great intellect outpaces god itself. The idea of god isn't smarter than Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius. Now, Jimmy doesn't kill Poltra. He doesn't kill this god. At least not yet. In the episode The Egg Pyre Strikes Back from the TV series, Jimmy Neutron is actually confronted by Poltra once more when the Yokians return. This time, Jimmy Neutron is able to kill Poltra. Again, with relative ease. So why didn't Jimmy kill the god in the first place? I think it's very clear that if Jimmy had walked out and used his great intellect to immediately kill the Yokian's god, it would have become clear that Jimmy was a character to fear. He needed to be put in a situation where it was his last resort. He could have escaped and stayed somewhat under the radar as just a boy genius, but if he had killed the god that day, maybe the people of Retroville and his parents would have seen him as a god killer and seen him as a more powerful being than just a boy genius. I've come up with my own term to explain just what Jimmy Neutron is after he defeats Poltra in the movie. He outsmarts a god. He's more powerful. So we add the power to genius. He's Jimmy Neutron boy penis. As Jimmy Neutron boy penis, he's a more powerful genius. Hence the combination of the two words. Jimmy Neutron boy penis is the one that needs to be feared. Once he kills Poltra, it becomes obvious how powerful he is. Jimmy Neutron is an unstoppable force of will and intellect. Not God himself can stop Jimmy Neutron Boy Penis. It's really an interesting point for a kid's movie to have God be the enemy, even if it is a God of an alien planet. And to have Jimmy Neutron so easily best this god is even more interesting because it's implying that humankind is smarter than this god, or at least one member of humankind, Jimmy Neutron. Jimmy Neutron is smarter than God. That's what this movie is trying to say. That's the underlying theme that seems so widely overlooked. And now that I've added a title to it as Jimmy Neutron Boy Penis, I hope more people will realize how fantastic this movie is as just a work of art. It's not the story of kids trying to save their parents. It's the story of a super genius defeating God and overcoming God so that now he is in fact the God of the universe that involves everyone in Jimmy Neutron. Jimmy Neutron is a god. Now I know I've said some of these are theories, but now that we've reached the end of this video, I'm cemented in the fact that this is all 100% true. I don't think these are theories, I think this is what the movie is actually trying to say. It's a work of art. It's an interesting story that people should definitely 
go back and watch with this insight. It'll make the movie play completely different. Jimmy Neutron, Boy Penis is the best movie I've ever seen, and it's incredibly fascinating once you have all this knowledge. So now with this knowledge, go out and watch the movie one more time. My name's Mr. Cow, and I'm being 100% serious when I say Jimmy Neutron is a god. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.